Somewhere in between is the truth. What exactly is the truth that's in between? What exactly explains why we're justified in believing what other people tell us? I want to answer that question by first answering a different question, an analogous question. One area where we're forming beliefs and acquiring knowledge, that is, we're getting the evidence, where we end up forming opinions and views about the world that is accurate so that our mind matches reality, is vision. Vision is extremely reliable. We move around our environment, relying on vision, and our other senses as well. So we can hear things, we can smell things, touch things, and taste things. But vision for human beings dominates our sense of the world. And it really tells us where things are, how they're moving, how far away they are, what their colors and shapes are. It's an oppressive psychological ability. Why is it so good? What explains the reliability of perception? That is, what explains why our perceptual representations, our experience of the world, accurately depicts the world? Why is that the case? Well, just think about the evolution of mammals. Mammals rely on vision to get around in the environment. They're smaller creatures in comparison to some of the large creatures in our evolutionary history. They may have a number of predators out to get them. They may have prey they need to stalk in order to survive. So there's a strong evolutionary pressure to take advantage of information about the environment that comes through light and exploit the regularities in the environment to create perceptual systems that reliably detect and track the features of the environment so that those mammals, including human beings, might survive and flourish in their environments. So there's a very strong evolutionary explanation for the reliability of our perceptual capacities. And when we're thinking about knowledge, we're often interested in why are those capacities so reliable? Well, that's the perceptual case. We're wondering about the case of forming the beliefs on the basis of testimony. Someone tells you something, you believe them. So what explains why testimony is so reliable, or at least reliable enough? It turns out this is a difficult question. Even so, the social sciences are suggestive. There are many potential answers that help us make sense of the reliability of testimony and can help us understand why it is it's a source of knowledge. So what are some of those explanations in the social sciences? Well, let's think of communication, sharing information, or at least sharing apparently good information through communication as a form of cooperation or coordination. I'm telling you something so that we can act together. Or you're asking me for something, you want my help, and so I tell you that something is the case, and you believe me because you think I'm being helpful. At least, that's often the case. So what explains why humans communicate effectively? Why do they cooperate? Why do they coordinate? There are a number of explanations of cooperation in general that you'll find in the evolutionary sciences as well as in the social sciences. What are some of those general explanations? Well, the first one that gets covered is called tit for tat or just trading. I give you something and I remember that I gave it to you and you remember that I gave it to you. And so in a way you owe me something. And if you give me something back, then we'll continue to exchange. But if you don't give me anything back, I'm not gonna trade with you again. And if in fact I don't think you would ever give something back, I won't give you something in the first place. And it turns out with enough memory and shared interest in cooperating and in trading, you can get a kind of evolution of cooperation in this way. So tit for tat, that's one way to do it. In a large enough group, I might also develop a reputation for being someone who can be trusted, someone who is a cooperator. So if I help one person and you're watching me help them, then you'll think I'm a helper. So in the future, when I need something, you might give it to me, thinking because of my reputation, because of what you've observed, that I'll help you in return. That's called indirect reciprocity, a kind of indirect trading. And that's another way that helpful behavior can evolve in all sorts of species, and in particular, in human beings. There are other strategies too. Coordination, for example. Suppose I am flying into your city and you're gonna pick me up. And you want to pick me up because you want me to help you build a house. Maybe I'm an expert house builder and that's why I'm flying in. Now, I'm gonna tell you the time that my plane arrives because I want you to pick me up. 
Why would I lie to you about the time the plane arrives? If I did, I might sit there for hours waiting for you to get me. Because we need to coordinate and act together, we need to share information, and so I'm going to tell you the truth. And oftentimes we're coordinating, so I've got a very strong motive to tell you exactly what I believe is the case so that we can effectively work together. So the first answer, tit for tat, sometimes we're just trading, and as long as we've got memory of who we've traded with, it's in my interest to trade with you, and so it's in my interest to help you in general, and so giving you accurate information is a way of trading with you, hoping that you in turn will give me accurate information when I need it. I might give a third party accurate information so that you'll observe me, so I'll develop a reputation for someone who gives accurate information, who's sincere, honest, competent, and so on. And then other times we're just coordinating. So those are three answers that explain why we might be truthful in communication. However, we're often truthful to strangers. I might walk up to a complete stranger and ask for information, and that person will just give it to me. That person is never going to see me again. I'm never going to see them again. We're not trading. There's no one around to observe us. It's not a question of indirect reciprocity. And there's no joint plan that we have. We're not coordinating. So why would people be trustworthy in those kinds of situations? Well, it turns out that humans care about what other people think about them. I know this is not a surprise to you, especially if you have teenage children. They're constantly telling you they need a new type of tennis shoes because all their friends have those types of tennis shoes. They have to have them because they don't want to suffer the disapproval of having the wrong kind of tennis shoes. We have an enormous sense that what other people think of us matters to us, and we're constantly trying to manage our sense of their evaluation of our behavior, and we're constantly doing this to other people too. We're often thinking about what they're doing, even third parties that we're not interacting with. This fact about our psychology is something Adam Smith explored, and it's something that's very prevalent in the social sciences as a driving explanation for human behavior. Well, when it comes to telling the truth, to being sincere, we care about that a lot. If someone lies to us, we will disapprove of them strongly for the lie, and it may have further consequences. So often when someone just asks us for information, we will just tell them because we're built to be sincere, because we fear disapproval, and we want to earn their approval. And it may be just a generic tendency where we're not thinking about that person in particular, that it's their approval that we care about. It's just we don't want people to think poorly of us regardless. Even if we were to slip up and tell someone something inaccurate, being sincere, when it occurred to us later that we said something false and maybe they went to the wrong bus station as a result of our poor instructions, we feel embarrassed. We feel embarrassed even though they probably made it, they probably forgot who we are, and there's no chance that we'll ever see them again. So we've internalized these expectations of correct or appropriate behavior, and one of the strongest things we tell our children, and we tell other people, and we tell ourselves is to be honest. So honesty is a social norm. Tell the truth is an expectation we hold ourselves to, and we feel good when we do it, and we hold others to, and we disapprove of them when they fail to do it, and those emotions, those desires, often influence our behavior. So it's a part of the explanation for why we are sincere, why we tell the truth when we do. But that's not the only reason. Sometimes we're not even aware of that when we're being truthful. We just do it kind of automatically. Well, maybe we're built to be informative, sincere communicators, and we only learn later on when it's in our interest to lie. That is, we're naturally sincere and only on special occasions or special types of people and special types of circumstances do we have a tendency not to tell the truth. So the student who's been accused of cheating, who's in front of the principal, that student has an incentive to lie on that occasion. But does that student lie all the time? Probably not. The student is probably sincere in almost every other context, except for maybe interesting contexts where we tell white lies, which vary what counts as a white lie and what doesn't, from culture to culture. And for the most part, we don't believe too much when people tell us a white lie. That is, we don't stake our lives on those, and we know that they're often being polite, trying to make us feel better. So the student often tells the truth, and maybe that's how we all are. Maybe, in fact, 
We are born to inform. So there are many things that we do by our nature, by our human nature, but perhaps our human nature as a social nature is such that we are born to be informative. And this takes us back to Reed's view. So Thomas Reed believed that we have a natural disposition to tell the truth, just as we have a natural disposition to believe what other people tell us. Those two combined mean, as social creatures, we're going to help each other out all the time. I can't know everything firsthand. I can't know that you're to be trusted firsthand, at least not in every case. But we need to share information with one another if we're going to work as a social being. Our societies depend upon an overall level of trust and informativeness, and it could be that we're that way by our very nature. So there are many possible explanations for the reliability of testimony. Does that mean in the end that the Reedian view is correct? Well, not exactly. It certainly doesn't support the strong Humean view where we need to figure everything out on our own as if we were individual atomistic creatures and not social creatures, simply thrown into a social environment. We can't believe what everyone tells us all the time. That's certainly true.